Wow! Just every time I turn my camera on, I just seem to get a kitty, don't I? Yeah, well, I'm here to tell a story. It's not about you. This is a true story and very funny, and it has to do with the American government and my videos, and it happened about seven years ago. Well, that's about the time I got my computer. I might have got it a year earlier. Didn't know much about computers and knew nothing about video editing on computers. So, I finally got some cheap, crappy $120 software to edit and convert all my old analog 8mm farm videos that I've been making since 1989. And since this was about 2003, I had the farm at that time for about 14 years. And, well, it looks like we have a visitor coming. And it's not the cops. <laughs> so, kitty. Hi, baby. You need a hug. All right. So, my buddy whose dad, when he died, donated the New Yorker car, that 76 white car. Well, his name is Oli, the young guy. He's, he was in a lot of my videos that are still on YouTube from the 90s at my farm. We did all the wild and crazy stuff back then that we wouldn't do now, like homemade bombs made with welding gas, flamethrowers, uh, just more dangerous stuff. We've uh, both become older and wiser and matured, and, and because of terrorism, terrorism and stuff, we don't do that kind of thing anymore. So... Anyways, I had uh, put together about 150 crudely edited videos with my new crappy editing software. This is before Windows Movie Maker, I think, or at least I didn't know how to use it at that time. And he came back from a visit after living in Ukraine for a couple years, even though he was born and raised in Canada. And I was showing him my new cache of videos you could now watch in the computer and he could see himself in the years gone by enjoying all the fun we had at the farm. He's the guy driving that old silver pony or getting it stuck in the mud or the guy who was with me when we were getting the 67 Cadillac running and the New Yorker running at his dad's old house. So he brought his laptop with him which he travels with and he decided to link it to my computer and download all those great memories onto his laptop too. So I said to him, well, where are you going now with that computer? Are you going to go back to the, you know, Ukraine or what are you going to do? He says, well, actually I'm heading out to go to Detroit because the airplane to go back is cheaper from Detroit than it is from London. I said, well, aren't you worried about the paranoia of the American government now because of the 9-11 thing? And they might want to be checking your laptop or computer when you cross the border? He says, oh, no. I've been across the border a hundred times and they've seen my laptop there and they've never checked it. I said, well, I'd be kind of worried since there's bomb videos on there. <laughs> and there was even my infamous chainsaw pig video. Don't tell anyone. Well, that pig tasted great. We had a great, uh, what was it called? New Year's dinner. Yeah, so he was on his way next day. Well, I found about this story a little while later was less than 24 hours, he was locked up in American jail. Yep, sure enough, they looked at his laptop, <laughs> and uh, first thing they noticed was uh, the Dave's Farm videos, long before YouTube was thought of. Most of these videos are on YouTube. And <laughs> they were excited, extremely excited. He was in a holding cell. The CIA or the FBI, one of those came in, the head of Homeland Security drove all the way in from Washington, I think he said it took him seven hours or something, and everybody interrogated him. Everybody at the border crossing at the Windsor, Detroit was taking turns watching the videos on that computer. They were questioning him what, who got the C4, what kind of dynamite, blah, blah, blah. We don't have any high explosives. The best thing we ever had was just welding gas. Like, you see all kinds of people put in a plastic bottle and do on YouTube. Well, don't do it. It's not a good idea. It's very dangerous, and I don't do that anymore either. And, of course, they thought I was a murderous character. 
I hadn't had a run-in with them before or anything to do with the American government or the border. And he was scared. They didn't even recognize that he was on any of those tapes because he had really long hair back in those days. Like, I mean, almost two feet long. And now he was a clean-cut, older-looking guy in his 20s. So they kept asking so many questions, and he gave them all the info. He told them who I was and how to contact me and blah, blah, blah. And they wouldn't give up. He thought he might be locked up for a long time. But after 24 hours, they let him go. They gave his computer back. He didn't trust it when he got it back. Everything was still there, un unmodified or unerased. But he figured they probably put some sort of tracking program in the hard drive. So he bought a new hard drive and just threw away that one and started all over from scratch. But <laughs> that was funny. They were going on and on. Do you know if he's murdered anybody, or if he's, or how many people has he murdered, or uh, is he part of a terrorist organization? It was absolutely hilarious. Well, they never did contact me, and I kind of feel that any fears they had, or any new fears they could have, at least they get to see what kind of person I am on YouTube. <laughs> You're not. So I guess maybe if they weren't afraid of me then, are they afraid of me now? Well, I'm afraid of them, and I'm not going to go across the American border anymore since that episode seven years ago. I feel that I'd probably be singled out as a person of interest, and I think people like that, the way American law works, could be held up to one year in jail without a charge, maybe even Guantanamo Bay as just a person of interest. I don't really trust those Americans when it comes to situations like terrorism. I'll send my killer tiger. Take over the world. But first I gotta take over YouTube. Keep watching and enjoy. Damn! Snow sucks! Especially now. It's April.